So up until now, we've been spending a lot of time talking about operant conditioning, behavior, consequence, um, and all of the basic contingencies that are involved with operant conditioning. Now, up until now, we have been talking about one-to-one -one behavior consequence ratios. Behavior happens, then a consequence. Behavior happens, then a consequence. Now, um, that's the most common form, but there's actually a variety of different patterns or schedules on which we can provide reinforcement. And so the question becomes, how often does a behavior need to receive reinforcement in order to maintain the contingency? We're talking about the frequency and the pattern which with the behavior is met with reinforcement. The simplest schedule, and the one we've been talking about up until now, is continuous reinforcement. What this means is that reinforcement is provided every single time the behavior occurs. Every time the child provides a correct answer, they get a piece of candy. Every time the dog sits, he gets a treat. And that works really well. That's a really dense, we call that a dense schedule of reinforcement. There's a lot of reinforcement occurring. Um, this is really great for when we're just starting to learn a behavior and we really need to drive home that contingency. But sometimes we don't want to give a reinforcer for every correct response. Can you think of any examples why we might not want to give a kid candy every single time they answer a question or give a dog a treat every single time he sits? There's a lot of potential reasons. I'll give you some of the most common. One is that uh, continuous reinforcement doesn't typically occur in the real world. We don't typically earn a reinforcer every single time we do something. We usually have to wait a little while before we get it. You don't get a paycheck every single time you show up to work. You have to wait a little while. You have to go to work for X amount of days um, before you earn that paycheck. Don't want people to learn or organisms to learn that every time they do something, it will be met with reinforcement. Another example or another reason why continuous reinforcement might be problematic, think about uh, edible reinforcers like candy or treats. Imagine if we're giving a kid candy every single time they answer a question, that's a lot of sugar, a lot of calories, um, could potentially be a health concern. Um, Another common reason, and one that we've already talked about a little bit, is that they might just get sick of the candy. You remember what that's called? When we are no longer in a state of deprivation uh, relative to our reinforcer? Satiation, we get sick of it. Um, that candy is no longer reinforcing. Imagine after you've had 15 pieces of candy, how motivated are you to earn that next piece of candy? Probably not very. And so this is where what we call partial or intermittent schedules of reinforcement come into play. With these more intermittent schedules of reinforcement, um, the behavior is only met with reinforcement some of the time. So instead of giving candy uh, every correct response, maybe I give one every 10 correct responses or every 10 minutes. Intermittent schedules have some advantages. They can address all of the issues that I just noted with satiation, with sugar overload, with things like that. The downside is that intermittent schedules are much more resistant to extinction. Remember what extinction is? When we present a when there's a behavior that is no longer followed by a reinforcer. If I give candy every single time there's a correct answer, Continuous reinforcement every single time. Candy, answer, can or, uh, answer, candy, answer, candy. Um, if I start withholding that candy, they're going to learn really quickly that giving an answer um, no longer results in the reinforcement. They're going to stop giving that response pretty quickly because they've learned pretty quickly. So extinction happens relatively fast on a continuous reinforcement schedule. But if I'm only providing reinforcement some of the time, they didn't know which response was going to result in the candy, um, or they knew that it was going to be you know, 10 responses before they get the candy. Um, so it takes a lot longer for them to pick up, for them to realize that it's not working, that, um, that they're not earning that reinforcer. So uh, intermittent reinforcement schedules are much more resistant to extinction. They're harder to break and harder to get rid of. So let's think about the four sort of basic schedules of reinforcement. There's two ways that we can break these down. The first is the consistency of administering reinforcement, and there are two types, fixed and variable. When the schedule is fixed, reinforcement occurs every X number of responses 
if we're talking about responses, or every X number of minutes if we're talking about time. Fixed means set. It's always going to be the same. For example, a child must um, answer the question 10 times to get a piece of candy. Okay, so they earn the candy after 10 correct responses. Then it starts all over again. Then we have to have 10 correct answers before another piece of candy is administered, so on. In a variable schedule, reinforcement occurs after an average number of time or responses, depending on which one we're thinking about. So now it's not always going to take the same amount of uh, of candy to earn, uh, of, sorry, of questions are answered to earn that candy. Okay. Maybe now the child is getting candy for an average of 10 correct responses. So maybe first they get the candy after five correct responses, but then next time it's seven, and then it's 13, and then it's four, so on and so forth. The number of responses required to earn candy is going to average out to 10, but it's going to vary each individual time. We can also think about the basis of administering reinforcement, or what does it take for reinforcement to occur? In ratio schedules, it's based on the number of responses. Ratio equals responses. I think of it because they both start with R. In ratio schedules, the amount of time that goes by is irrelevant. In a ratio 10 schedule, um, say that child earns their candy after 10 correct uh, responses, no matter how long it takes. It could take them five minutes, they could do run through it very quickly, or it could take them an hour. It doesn't matter. We're just talking about the number of responses. And reinforcement is earned after that number of responses has been earned. If ratio is responses, thinking about um, the amount of responses that are admitted that are um, emitted. Interval means time, how much time goes by. So with an interval schedule, reinforcement occurs after the first correct response once the interval has elapsed. So maybe now we have our kid on a 10-minute interval schedule. That means that they will earn candy the first time they answer a question after that 10-minute interval has, relapsed, has elapsed. Um, reinforcement is delivered every 10 minutes regardless of how many times they press the lever. Um, oh, sorry, are there how many times they answer the question? With ratio, the amount of time is irrelevant. With interval, the amount of responses is irrelevant. Now, just like positive and negative reinforcement and punishment, we can combine these two. Combine them into fixed ratio, variable ratio, fixed interval, and variable interval. Um, I give you the definitions here, but we're going to go through them on the next couple of slides. You can just use this as an overview, but let's dig into each one individually. Reinforcement in fixed ratio schedules is administered after a set number of responses. So in a fixed ratio or an FR10 schedule, um, the kid will earn candy after answering 10 times. It will always require 10 correct answers before the candy is delivered. It's fixed because it's always 10, and it's ratio because it's based on the number of responses. The amount of time doesn't matter. These schedules of reinforcement, these intermittent schedules, tend to yield um, fairly predictable patterns of behavior. And so I have this graph here, and I'll show this to you for each of the four different uh, schedules. We're looking at fixed ratios. This is that blue, this blue line here. The line here is when reinforcement is delivered. And so a fixed ratio schedule is predictable. It produces a high response rate with a short pause after reinforcement. Um, one example is the eyeglass salesperson who just wants to earn their bonus. So the goal here is to deliver high or to engage in high rates of response, quick responding in order to maximize the delivery of reinforcement or that sale. Now, fixed schedules always have something called a post-reinforcement pause, PRP. This is a lack of responding for a short period following reinforcement. We always see this in fixed schedules. So we'll see this again with fixed interval schedules. Um, but we always see this in the fixed schedules because the organism knows when to expect the reinforcer and knows that it's not coming for a little bit. So they take a little break. 
the eyeglass salesperson knows that she won't make another sale until the next customer come in, comes in. So she might as well stop engaging in sales tactics until then. Another example is I play an emoji game. I'm sure a lot of you have sort of apps or games that you play on your phone. In my emoji game, I can earn a new emoji after I earn 30,000 coins. And so my ability to earn that reinforcer is based on, um, it's based on my responding. It's based on my playing the game. It's fixed because it's always 30,000 coins. It doesn't matter if I blow through those 30,000 coins in 10 minutes or if it takes me a week to do it. It's irrelevant. Um, it's a fixed ratio schedule. And that post reinforcement pause comes in where you now I'm working towards those 30,000 coins. I'm getting closer and closer. My response rate's increasing, kind of like what we see here. It gets faster and faster. I hit that 30,000. I earn my new emoji and I go, all right, it's going to be a little while before I get to the next one. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to take that little bit of a break before I pick back up again. So that's why we see that post reinforcement pause. Variable ratio refers to reinforcement after in a specific number of responses on average. So now our child has to answer a question an average of 10 times before the candy will be administered. It's variable because it's an average of 10 times. And it's ratio because it's still based on the number of responses. It doesn't matter how long it takes the child to uh, engage in those 10 correct responses. Um, it's related to the responses. That's what elicits the reinforcement. The variable ratio schedule, this red bar here, is unpredictable. It yields high and very steady response rates with little or no pause after reinforcement. Um, there's no post reinforcement pause in variable scheduling because any response could be the one that gets reinforced. Unlike fixed responding when or um, fixed schedules, when we know when to re expect reinforcement with variable, we don't. Any any hit could be the next one. Gambling is reinforced on a variable ratio schedule. Gamblers keep making bets and reinforcement is delivered just often enough to hold their interest. But they never know exactly when it's going to happen. So they keep gambling at a high steady rate and reinforcement is delivered based on responding. You have to pull the lever in order to be able to earn the prize. Um, there's no post reinforcement pause and we see this uh, pretty, pretty, uh, high and steady rates of responding. Fixed interval refers to reinforcement after a specific amount of time. Now we're talking about this little orange uh, scallop shaped uh, line right here, which I'll talk more about in a second. We're switching gears now. We're no longer talking about the number of responses. Now we're talking about the amount of time that goes by. On an FI or fixed interval 10 schedule, the child must wait 10 minutes to earn their candy. You can think of it as setting a timer at the beginning of each trial. Trial begins, the timer is set for 10 minutes. The child can answer questions as many times as they want, but until the timer goes off, they're not getting any candy. Once the timer goes off, as soon as they give a correct answer, they earn reinforcement. So reinforcement is based on time. We tend to see lower rates of responding. Why would you, you know, bust your butt responding when you know you're not going to earn the candy until that timer goes off? It's fixed because the amount of time is always the same. And it's interval because it's based on the amount of time that goes by, not the amount of responding. The fixed interval schedule always yields this sort of scallop shaped response pattern where we see a significant pause that occurs after reinforcement. Um, and we see that scallop shape of responding because the individual knows when to expect the reinforcer. So they know immediately after the reinforcer was given, there's no point in engaging in the response. It's going to be a little while. As it gets closer and closer and closer to the next interval of, re of uh, reinforcement, they're going to start to speed up. They're going to engage in the behavior more and more and more until the reinforcer becomes available. Somebody who just had surgery. Um, pain meds are often released <laughs> on a timed schedule. Maybe for this person, it's every three hours that they know that they earn them um, are able to get the, the pain medicine when they hit the button. So there's a surgery patient, they're waiting for their pain meds. They know that no matter how many times they press the button during that hour interval, um, nothing's going to happen. They're only going to get the pain meds after the hour interval elapses. There's no point frantically hitting the button. Um, 
But as we start to get closer and closer and closer to that hour mark, they're probably going to start pushing the button more and more in the hopes that the reinforcement will be delivered. Another example is checking the mail. <clears throat> mail is delivered around the same time each day, say noon. There's no point checking at 9 a.m. because I know that the mail is not going to be there. As it gets closer and closer to noon, though, I might check more and more frequently. First time I check that mailbox following the, the elapsement of the interval, produce reinforcement. I'll get some mail. But then I'm going to stop responding for a while. Once I've gotten the mail on a particular day, I don't keep checking the mailbox because I know there won't be any more mail until around noon tomorrow. <clears throat> Variable interval refers to reinforcement after an average amount of time has passed by. So on a VI or variable interval 10 schedule, we're still going to set that timer at the beginning of the session, but this time it won't always be for 10 minutes. It'll average out to 10 minutes. <clears throat> the first time we said it might be for 15 minutes, um, and then the child would earn candy the first time they engage in um, answering a question after the timer goes off. Then we might set it for five minutes, then for eight minutes, so on and so forth. It will average out to 10. The variable interval schedule is unpredictable. <clears throat> we see a moderate steady response rate. So the um, interval schedules tend to uh, elicit fewer and slower responses than the virtuo schedules. This is because the number of responses does not influence the availability of reinforcement. Um, <clears throat> dating myself a little bit here, but when I was younger, we had call, uh, before call waiting even, when you called somebody, if they were on the phone, the line would be busy. You'd get that busy signal. Now, say I call my mom and I'm trying to reach her. Well, I don't know how long it's going to be before she hangs up and frees the line. The next time I call, once the line has freed up, will be met with reinforcement, the call being answered. I can call as many times as I want during that variable interval, <clears throat> but the phone will still be busy during that interval, regardless of if I call one time or a hundred times. So variable interval schedules, this is not based on my responding. It doesn't matter. Um, it's the first response after the interval has elapsed that will be met with reinforcement. Um, this is just an example, uh, more examples from the book. I'm not going to go through this, but you can look over this on your own. See if you have any um, questions, you can always let me know. Um, and so here are just, this is just an example that you can do. So I would pause the video, see if you can identify uh, which one is which. So the first one is fixed ratio. It's fixed. We know this because after you fill your punch card, every 10 visits, it's always 10. It's the same. Um, you get a free meal or beverage. This is related to your responding. It doesn't have to do with how, how much time. You could go 10 times in 10 days, It does, or it could take you three years to do this. It doesn't matter. It's uh, based on your responding. The second one is variable ratio. So same thing. We're still based on the number of responses, but now it varies, okay? Um, the word that should give this away for you is random. The app is programmed to give you a reward after a random number of purchases. You never know how many purchases you have to make to earn that word. Number three is, oops, number three is fixed interval. Okay. It's fixed because it's always going to be the same um, um, on the hour, right? We know that it's an hour amount of time. Um, and speaking of time, since we're talking about time, we know that it's going to be interval. So process of elimination, the last one is going to be variable interval. We're still talking about amount of time. Certain time periods have to pass, um, but you, they don't know which, uh, how much time has to pass or when that reinforcer is going to be given. That's why it's variable. Um, and so that's it for schedules of reinforcement. I know there's a lot of terminology and they can be a little bit confusing. You can always feel free to reach out and ask me any questions. Um, in the next section, we're going to talk about some different models of learning, specific, specifically cognitive, social, and biological.